Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr. The idealist is a person that feels that the physical world of facts and data and numbers and figures is less important than the world of dreams and ideas and values. If you're an idealist first, you tend to feel that you are searching for something, that you're looking for something, that there is something hidden behind the world that is deeper or more important than what is or what you see before you. The physical world that you see before you, it's not good enough. It's what you want it to become. It's what you dream of. It's what you think is hidden underneath the surface. That's, that's what's really important. That's what really matters. Second, you tend to feel that there is some kind of magic in the world. You know, there's something magical going on in the world. It's not just the, it's raw laws of nature, but there is some kind of hidden force or some kind of spiritual force to the world that high, works in secret, you know, there's some kind of laws of karma or some kind of spiritual law or some kind of spiritual force that forms around your beliefs and your ideas and your imagination. Your imagination can somehow shape the world and what you imagine can become real if you just imagine, if you just believe in it enough, if you have hope and a sense of romance, the world around you will align or shape itself in accordance with this. Third, you believe not in money or in the terms of physical reward or in work or labor, but rather in giving and helping and supporting the people around you. You believe rather than in creating or building or making the world in being free and in trusting in nature and going with the flow and finding harmony and finding some kind of inspiration. You believe that your own inspiration or your own whims or your own feelings stand above the system and the physical rules and the laws in place and the education rules set before you. Your personal inspiration, your personal path, your own authentic self-expression stands before what the system is telling you to do and what the money, how much money you're going to be paid or how successful you're going to be or how easy it's going to get. Your personal whims and feelings stand before these things. For you believe that you believe in a certain kind of utopia or dream world. You have this, this idea in your head of how society or your own life or your own lifestyle could be in accordance with your own values and your own dreams and ideas. You have some kind of idea or dream of how your life could be at its very best. And it's not what it is right now. It's definitely not what it is right now. There's something different. You're an idealist when you feel that you always struggle to stand up for yourself. You've always felt a bit beaten down by the system. You've always felt a little bit sidelined. You've always felt like an outcast. Because it's hard for you to express and speak out for what you believe in. You feel other people do not understand quite enough. You feel that other people don't listen or that other people don't hear you. And you feel that when you do stand up for yourself, you just sound crazy. You just sound ridiculous. And you feel that it's hard to put yourself out there and to speak out about these topics because you don't think anybody will listen. You're an idealist when, while you understand that data and numbers and statistics are correct and give pointers and give balance, you still feel something is right. You still have a feeling about something. You still believe in something. You still have something you're thinking about, but you know that data has clearly said it's false. You know the numbers clearly contradict this. You know that this is clearly unrealistic, but still you think about it, still you dream about it. 
you know you're a dreamer when you get a sense of flow and energy and motivation from the abstract world of ideas and images and ima from the imagination itself. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to actually do anything at all. You don't have to uh, be in the physical world. And the physical world doesn't have to align with your own views. But just to be able to dream and to talk about your dreams with somebody or to just be able to engage fully in it, to immerse in that experience... That is enough. That gives you energy to get through anything. It helps you get through your day job. It helps you get through all those practicalities that you have to do. As long as you can take time for yourself, as long as you can dream, you can get energy. And that energy can help you get through anything. You know you're an idealist when what motivates you are is... You know, the relationships you have and it's the importance you have to society and to people around you. It's what you can do for other people that matters. It's how you can help others. It's how you can influence other people. It's how you can make the world a better place emotionally. It's how you can make people happier. It's how you can spread a positive feeling. It's how you can help people get through trauma and difficulties. It's how you can get yourself through these things. You know you're an idealist when you prefer to introspect and think about yourself and about harmony and who you are and who you really are, you know, underneath it all. Rather than, you know, try to be perfect or try to fit with a certain image or to fit in. You believe if you can just find yourself, you can find the answers and the meaning of life. You know you're an idealist when... You have this romantic idea of being a hero or being an adventurer or going on an adventure, you know, doing the Walter Mitty or Life of Pi thing, you know, grabbing a boat, going out on the sea, you know, traveling, seeing the world, just seeing it, you know. I don't know how to finance it. I don't know how to get the money to do it. I don't know what to do about my day job, you know. Uh, what do I do if I quit? How do I finance it? What do I, how, how do I pay my rent, you know. You, have, you can't shake this idea that you want to go on an adventure, you want to see the world, you want to travel, you want to see new places. And you know, yeah, you know you're an idealist when you keep thinking about these things and dreaming about doing these things. No matter how old you get, these dreams remain. Which makes you wonder why didn't I just do it when I was 20? Why did I have to wait till I was 30 or 40? You know all these things. If you know all these things, you're a dreamer. You know, if you know all these things, you're an idealist. But what kind of idealist are you? What kind of a dreamer are you? There are essentially four versions of dreamers we're talking about. First, you have the sage. Then you have the seeker. Then you have the magician. Then you have the healer. These are four kinds of idealists. First, the sage is a person that believes in going inside and finding the truth inside. True thinking about the world, gaining wisdom and insight, gaining perspective, gaining understanding, gaining awareness. Then you have the seeker that focuses on finding the truth in the world around them. By investigating the world, by becoming a detective, by searching underneath the surface, by looking underneath the rocks, by finding beneath the lines what other people say, what they really mean, what is really true happening, what's really going on. You have the seeker that tries to transform the world in accordance with their own intuition and their own ideas, that tries to change the world and make the world different. And you have the sage that tries to impart wisdom on the world and hopes to transform the world by sharing the truth that no person has seen or found before. By finding something, some kind of original piece of wisdom that will help the world become better. You know, you're not one kind of idealist, that's, that's the magician. 
And the magician believes in doing the impossible, by being able to do something no person has done before, by being able to create the source of vision, or to create the ideas that you have in your own head. The magician believes they can shape the world in their image, or somehow make a big difference by seeing through a vision. Another kind of uh, idealist that's the healer or the romantic. The romantic believes uh, in love and connection and in uh, creating bonds with other people that are bigger than, you know, those physical bonds that go past time and space, you know, finding a soulmate, finding uh, genuine, meaningful connections. The romantic uh, believes the world accor works according to some kind of spiritual law or force and tries to understand this force and tries to build a relationship with this force and to act in the service of love or of these ideas and whims. But there are also four other kinds of idealists. And you can be two of these. You can be one of the four I just mentioned, one of the four intuitive subtypes, or one of the four feeling subtypes. The four feeling subtypes, they are the helpers, they are the muses, they are the utopians, and they are the heroes. You have the adventurers that thrive in the thought of going on a big bold adventure, seeing the world, traveling and going somewhere no person has been before, doing something big, you know, do, making a big difference in the world, having some kind of genuine importance, making, saving the world, you know, uh, saving the people, uh, making other people happy, uh, making the world a better place somehow. Then you have the utopians that want to impart in the world some kind of utopia, you know, they they want to share with the world, you know, the recipe for happiness and for understanding and wisdom. They want to share with the world, you know, how we should all live and how we should treat one another and what would make us all happy and what would make the world a better place. Then beyond those two, you have the helpers and you have the muses. And the helpers, their focus is on giving, you know, they believe they have something they need to give or share with the world. They believe in generosity and in what I can do for other people, how I can help other people, what I can share with other people. And finally, you have the muses, and they believe in authentic self-expression. The muses, they're really interesting because they believe they have something important to say or do that only they can say and do. The muses believe they are unique or that they are, they believe in their own personal significance, you know, we're all personally significant, but the muse truly believes and knows they are personally significant, that they are special, and that there is something unique about them that has to be shared and expressed with the world, that has to be trusted, you know, you have to trust yourself, you have to find your own truth, you have to speak your own truth, because then if you can do that, you can also make the world a better place, and you can help other people find themselves, and you can make other people love themselves. So those are the eight different kinds of idealists. What I wanted to share with this video was that there are many different kinds of dreamers out there and that you're not alone. Often when you're a dreamer you tend to feel you're alone, you know, I'm alone, nobody listens, nobody understands, but there are so many out there. What I wanted to share with this video is uh, a recipe for awakening because I feel there are so many sleeping dreamers out there, you know, people that they go through life and they're stuck in their own bubble, in their own imagination and in their own world. And that's okay for now, for where you are right now, that's completely fine. But there comes a time where you have to awaken and that's also when you have to understand that there are other people with the same dreams you have, with the same ideas you have, with the same ideals you have. They're out there. If you're alone and you, f you feel like an outcast, other people do too. And other people come from the 
not exactly the same situation as you do, but from another very interesting position. What I want you to understand this, uh, it's important to connect with these people and it's important to bond with these people and to find these people and to help them. They are the people you need to help, you know. You've always felt that you needed to help or make it a world better. But these are the people that you need to help. These are the people that you want to make better. What I want to ask is, how can the NF personality type, the dreamer personality type, truly awaken and step into themselves? What can we do to truly find ourselves, to truly find harmony, to truly find peace, to truly go on adventures? To truly find truth, to truly understand and gain wisdom. What can we do to truly awaken ourselves and to truly stand beyond what we are right now and to do more than what we have done so far? What can we do to truly trust our own voice and to truly be able to stand up for ourselves and our values and to avoid being shut down by the system? What can we do to protect ourselves from the sometimes rough world and the hard truths that stand before us? What can we do to be ourselves even if these truths are real and even if these things happen? What can we do to keep on living, to keep on loving and to keep on thriving? What can we do to make peace with the establishment without accepting its problems and flaws and while maintaining a clear image of our dreams and a clear vision of what we want to achieve? What I'm basically asking for is what is the recipe of growth for the idealist and what can you do to be a good dreamer. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below and if you relate to this video, if you are a dreamer, feel free to leave a like and share and subscribe to other dreamers out there. Perhaps you can awaken together, perhaps we can connect and perhaps we can make the world better.